Okay, Ian. Um, <coughs> thanks for having us here. Um, right. I mean, how old is the clock, do you think? I would have thought about 1680, 1700. Good Lord. Probably made by a local blacksmith. Okay, so the, the, the little plate on the front that's got is, uh, yeah, it's a, Mr. Rosier of Langham. Probably a modification. Okay. He either modified it or improved it, right. whenever it was. Okay. The, so, what do you intend to do? That's, right, that's... what we intend to do is to get it all cleaned up so as we can see actually exactly what we've got. We need a few new gears where there's a couple of bits missing so that we can set the time. And then we need several new bushes, like this bit that shouldn't do that, um, and several bits. And then just take some of the packing out and make sure it all works properly. Treat all the wood with wood preservative and then paint all the steel with a um, satin black sort of finish. Okay. That'll look like it would have done when it was made originally. Well, other than the paint, because they probably wouldn't have painted it. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the clock mechanism, what is yeah. this, is, this is the striking this, mechanism. This side here, which is uh, from the front and be the left hand side, would be the striking mechanism, which strikes suitable blows for the whichever hour is showing. And this is a air brake, just to govern the speed of the strike. And then the, the lines would go on these two wooden barrels, and that would supply the weight to make the clock go. Why are there two? Because you have one for the strike and one for the ah, go. Right. The so do they think you have to have two weights then? Yeah, ah, you have two okay. weights, two winding units. I don't think this has been going for ages. No, clearly okay, not. It. No, definitely not. In fact, I think lots of bits have not worked for ages. Yeah. Well, so, as far as we know, it was last working in about sort of 2012. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, some, it had been working sort of intermittently, but, yeah. you know, only for an hour or two. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it should... Look at it, I'm surprised it worked at all. <laughs> when it's finished, it should be within probably two or three minutes a month. Really? Should be. Oh, right. Okay. It should be. Yeah. So hopefully. how do we then adjust it? Once it's, uh... On the pendulum, when you've got the new pendulum bar, if you raise the pendulum up, it will go faster and make the pendulum longer, it will go shorter, it's slower. A question, it's a question of suck it and see. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. You no. set it going and then see what happens really after a few weeks. But we'll, have it, we'll set it up in the workshop so we know what it does do. So once you've done all the work, you will actually, uh, you know, sort of rig it up here so you yep, have it going, and then we'll bring it back to yours and right, okay. set it up in the tower. Right, okay. good. And how long do you think that's going to take? It will probably be end of January, beginning of February. That's all right. That's fine. Something like that. That's fair. Something like that. Sort of. If you said by the middle of February, yeah, it'll get it all back and running, hopefully. Excellent. That's February 17th. <laughs> I've got a year to it. <laughs> Good. So, uh, yes. And so what about this automatic winder? Where will that go? That will go underneath. So this, this goes where it went in the tower. And then the winding units are two sort of little boxes that go underneath, really. I can um, and then the drum of one. So that's fine. Basically, they're a drum like that in, a, in a, a frame with a motor on it, and then the wire, the cable steel line goes on there, and the drive would be out there, which would drive the okay. clock with a chain wheel sort of there somewhere. How does it know when to wind it up? I know that sounds a bit uh, basic. They, what we do is we, they, as it runs down, there's a, a limit, there's a limit switch and a, and a go switch on it. And the go switch is then on a timed relay. Right. So in other words, that will it will operate and it will switch off, which will be wound up, and then it will do a few ticks and switch on, and then it will wait five minutes before it winds the weight up, and then it will run. And that keeps doing that sort of continually because they're little digital time relays we use. And this strikes the hours, not not, not only the hours. Only the hours. Yep. Yep. And, and it goes all through the night, well, 24 hours a day. I thought we were doing a silent thing. Yes, we are. How does that so work? That's, 
There's a, that just interrupts the... No, there's a bit missing actually, but the bit that actually pulls the hammer, which will be up on the bell, we just pull that down and stop it. All right. Literally pull that hammer off of the bell okay. for the number of hours that you want it not to work. And then put that hammer back on the bell and then away it goes again. Right, brilliant. So, and that will all be... So there'll be three little units which will all be under that stone that it used to be. So where, where's the bell that it strikes? Up it's bell. up it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the big one. It's yeah. The, the, I think it's the tenor bell. Yeah. Right. The hammers just here. There's the hammer, which is the hammer that hits the bell up the tower. Oh, what's left of it? Yeah, so that looks in Which obviously this will be rather less than perfect condition. Yeah, that'll be sorted out as well. So <coughs> we've got to work that out, I think. <laughs> but uh, no, so that will yeah, so that will all be sorted out. But okay. it'll all be you'll be I'll be impressed. You will be, yes. I'll be impressed. Yeah, because <laughs> this is it's it's good because it's old. Well, it's a very old clock. Yeah, but it's so. also old technology. Have you any you idea could, how we could research the history of it? You might be able to look it up from that now. I've looked him up already. You can't find, no. And um, I've, I've got a lot of information about him. But that's a bit... But prior if you to go that. back in the church records, there could be somewhere the man that made it that sold it to the church. Oh, right, yeah, OK. Um, but you'd have to look back. I would look from... 1675 to 17 something. Good Lord. You know, quite a way back. Or probably 1670. I mean, this is quite old. This would be probably the third or fourth oldest clock that's run, still, or will be running in East Anglia. Really? Yeah, there's one older than this in uh, Clare Church, um, which is a different style. Then there's a. Um, Another one at Metfield Church, which is probably slightly older, but that's a different style. Yeah, it will be one of the oldest clocks running in East Anglia. Excellent. Certainly doing what it's... What it should be doing, telling the time. Exactly, or well, doing <laughs> what it was doing when it was made, that's, yeah. that's the thing. I mean, this, this is the thing, because they, once you get them working, they do what they did when it was made in... 1670 or whatever it was and still do whereas there's nothing else that, that does the same thing you know is it brilliant all electric or whatever right thank you very much that's all right well hopefully that's